Uh, what comments do you guys have? Maybe we can start with Kevin regarding the evolution of the previous version of the CCNP track to what it is today. What do you think Cisco was thinking when they made these changes? When I first got my NP, it was back in, I think it was 1999, and at that point there was a dedicated troubleshooting course. Back in those days it was called CIT, Cisco mm -hmm. Internet Network Troubleshooting. And it was a really, really thin course. I used to I used to teach it years and years ago, and it would just point out a bunch of debug commands, show commands, sample output, how do you interpret it, and it was a course dedicated to troubleshooting, which I think is a good thing. We spent almost all of our class time with students in real gear trying to figure out problems. But then when Cisco took the next step, and I think there might have been a couple of iterations of NP since then, mm -hmm. here was Cisco's comment, I remember. They said that now we're going to start integrating troubleshooting as part of the curriculum. So when they come out, well, with the current courses, or I should now say the previous courses, BSCI, BCMSN, mm -hmm. ICW, Mm -hmm. ONT. Right. After they would cover a technology, they would say, here are a list of show commands or debug commands. Here's how you do some troubleshooting. But the reality of what happened in a lot of cases, it really, troubleshooting didn't, didn't get the focus it needed. Uh, for example, an instructor might be going through the material. They would explain it. Here's how you set it up. And then at the end of the section, you've got this little collection of show commands, and they might say, yeah, and here's a reference. Uh, here are some commands you might want to look at, look through if you ever have to troubleshoot something. There really wasn't a lot of emphasis given to. It's it's really a science and an art, I think, of troubleshooting. You have to have some intuition. You have to have some experience. It's not just memorizing a bunch of facts. And there wasn't a lot of focus given to strategic troubleshooting. So now Cisco, I think, is is seeing the wisdom of pulling a lot of troubleshooting content out and forming a new course around it. And as we'll talk about when we get to that, uh, to the T-Shoot uh, course mm -hmm. specifically here in a few mm -hmm. minutes, it's a big course, uh, much, yeah. much uh, bigger than the traditional CIT course. I mean, it's a really thick course, really comprehensive, and it teaches more than just here are some troubleshooting tools and commands. It, it helps teach you logically how do you attack Different troubleshooting, uh, different troubleshooting targets, and resolve various trouble tickets. So I think it's a, I think it's a really good step on the part of Cisco. Mm -hmm. Good. And Dave, you wrote the official certification guide for the switch exam. How would you characterize the evolution of this skill set from BCM SN now to switch? I think the biggest change has been in the uh, exam blueprint itself. If you've seen that on the Cisco Learning Network, you might be taken by surprise. You probably notice words like plan, configure, verify, and document mm -hmm. instead of specific switch features and uh, tasks that you have to perform. A lot of people uh, have asked me since the, the exam blueprint has come about, why isn't the spanning tree protocol on the list? And your book has four chapters dedicated to it. What's mm -hmm. going on? I think you have to look beyond the surface of the, the exam blueprint to see when you have a topic like connecting switch to switch, uh, configure switch to switch connectivity, and prevent loops from forming. You have to read you know, between the lines to see all the different features that you might have to pull into that. So I think they're taking a, a step uh, maybe forward and saying that a networking professional had better have the skills to decipher what's going on, yeah. take a broad task and break it down, and to be able to perform all those tasks. Mm -hmm. And Wendell, you wrote the official certification guide for route. What do you think about the evolution from BSCI to the current route skill set? Yeah, there's there probably two big categories. The first mirrors what Dave said about the mm -hmm. whole plan and um, or build an implementation plan, build a verification plan, that kind of thing. The other is it's still a pure routing topic. Mm -hmm. They've tweaked it, but uh, not big changes there. I can uh, briefly from a list. Uh, we lost ISIS multicast. We added more on IPv6, uh, mm -hmm. basic layer three VPNs. A little bit more on layer three path control. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, they're tweaking it for what people use most often mm -hmm. today. And it'll be interesting to see how much the emphasis is on real planning topics versus we want you to have those skills, but we're going to test you on the same topics we always have. Very interesting. So we have now this new focus on troubleshooting, which certainly ties to real world practice. The switching involving planning and actually some design or architecture stuff, it sounds like and route maybe being somewhere in between. It sounds like route may have undergone the least change of the three exams. Uh, I don't know that I've put them uh, switch and route side by side. I, mean, yeah. I would have guessed they would have been similar as far as the net number of change technical topics. Dave, what, what do you think? I think so, too. Switch has undergone um, the change of focus that I talked about, but yeah. then 
uh, we've had some major topics go away. Uh, this is actually good news for a lot of people that uh, the wireless LAN configuration, most of that is gone now. It's been pushed out to specializations. So you focus more on how to integrate wireless LAN into your wired LAN. And speaking of that, just a moment uh, to, to kind of talk about those specializations. Where do they fit in? I mean, if someone who has their CCNA and now they want to move to the professional level, how do they make that point? Again, keeping in mind effort, the return on investment. Where do these specializations fit in? Well, I'll jump in that. We've had actually a couple of fun blog discussions over the last year Mm -hmm. or so about the topic of going broad or going deep, and we did it in a couple of different contexts, and one of those was a simple question of, would you rather have three CCNPs or one CCIE? And Mm -hmm. a surprising percentage, and I didn't have time to click to find the the poll that we did with that blog post um, Mm -hmm. while we were just chatting here, but I think it was somewhere 50-50 on people saying, you know, I'd, I'd rather have CCNP and CCSP and CCBP rather than be CCIE RS. Mm-hmm. And I, going into it, thought it's going to be, you know, a 10 to 1 that would prefer to have the CCIE. Now, I don't, it was not a scientific survey by any means. Um, you know, you can discount that part of it. We, we did a similar thing on the we'd rather have three or four CCNAs rather than CCNP. And um, surprisingly, high percentage there also thought broader was better. So uh, I think the, um, at least in that particular set of people who are paying attention, um, broad is, is appealing today. But yeah. CCMP can be one step in that going broad, um, and then you go to the next specialization and the next one. Mm-hmm. Well, without further ado, why don't we now drill in in more detail on those three exams? What you're seeing on the screen right now, of course, are the Cisco Press official certification guides, really the the main go-to text for those who want to pass these exams. Wendell, I don't think I ever told you this. Maybe I did, but several years ago, I worked at Transcender writing practice exams. And when we did the CCNA and CCNP, this was, as Kevin said, in the CIT days, I definitely, we relied very heavily on your text. I always wondered, what does Wendell Odom look like? Because this was several years ago, and, you know, the Cisco clip art on the front, I was like, is, was this based on Wendell? No, I don't think so. Well, I'm pretty <laughs> sure from looking at this video that none of us three guys look like the 20-something thin girl here on the cover of those books. So. Yeah, there's the evolution of marketing for you, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's come back to Kevin, the CCNP T-shoot exam. What would you like to tell us, in particular, current CCNAs who are looking to sit for this exam? What can they expect? Okay, the, the, the T-shirt exam, now I haven't seen the the beta of the router or the switch, but my guess is, because I have set the beta for the T-shirt exam, my guess is it's undergone the most changes from what a traditional Cisco exam would be like. It's very, very different. Let me break it down for you. And this is material I share in the book as well, mm-hmm. and it was confirmed when I went to take the the beta exam recently. About 90% of the time on the exam is going to be spent doing active troubleshooting. There are going to be about a dozen questions or so, about a dozen questions that are the traditional multiple choice questions, Mm -hmm. and they might deal with things such as the theory of troubleshooting, what are your different troubleshooting models. Uh, You might talk about FCAPs, for example, and you might have to know about different tools. Are you going to do a top-down approach, a divide-and-conquer? Just know some of the basic theory of of troubleshooting. And that's what we cover in about the first three chapters or or so in the exam certification guide. Mm -hmm. But then it gets really interesting. Then you're presented with one topology. You're going to get to know this topology really, really well over the next couple of hours or so. 